What's up guys, my name is Ace, and this week's aftermarket part in Modern Warfare 3 is the Jack Devastators kit for the Reclaimer 18. And this is a kit that gives us a Kimbo Reclaimer 18, so one in each hand. And in today's video, we're going to be diving deep into exactly how this works and how it stacks up against the base Reclaimer 18. And also, I'm going to be sharing my favorite setup to use with this, which is fairly obvious because we are very limited in our attachment selection the moment you put this kit on. So that's the first thing we'll cover here. With this kit, it will block off your barrel, your under barrel, your optic, and your stock. And this just leaves us with a muzzle, a laser, ammunition, and rear grip. So you are going to be limited in that area, but let's get into some of the specific stats here. And we're going to start this off with rate of fire. With the base Reclaimer 18, in pump action, it fires at 82 rounds per minute. Then in semi-auto, which you can just swap over to on the fly, that increases all the way up to 179 rounds per minute. However, when you put the Jack Devastators kit on, you are locked to one fire mode. You can't swap between them. And this fires at 66 rounds per minute, so noticeably slower than even the pump action mode on the base Reclaimer. In saying that though, that is the per gun rate of fire, and technically if you alternated these, that could effectively double your rate of fire. Next up, just some miscellaneous stats that this has an impact on. It does harm our damage ranges, but those values that they share in the menus, they don't really mean a whole lot, and it's much better to visualize it, so we'll look at that in just a little bit. But before we do that, it is worth noting our hip fire spread values are significantly harmed when using this, and since we are losing out on many attachment slots, you can't really do a whole lot to improve that hip fire either. So that has a big downside and trade-off when using the Jack Devastators. You're going to have quite a wide spread, and you, of course, can't aim down sight to tighten that. However, with this kit, we also get a very significant improvement to our sprint to fire time. It's only 76 milliseconds. That's a very fast sprint out time now. And on top of that, we reload surprisingly quickly, considering the fact that we've got one gun in each hand. I don't know what he does off screen to reload them, but your character will do that pretty fast. However, we only get four shells per gun, and that can't be increased at all. And that pretty much covers it for the miscellaneous stats. Now let's get into our damage ranges and our like one shot kill potential, two shot kill potential for instance. And first up, these are our ranges in pump action and in semi-auto when using the Reclaimer 18. And in pump action, you can see we have a very impressive one shot kill potential. Although it's not a super consistent one shot kill potential, it is possible to get a one shot kill up to 16 and a half meters. Whereas with the Jack Devastators kit, when you're using the attachments that improve our hip fire spread as much as possible, which of course you're going to be doing with this, and I will be sharing those attachments at the end of the video, our maximum hit potential is just 17 and a half meters. That's pretty much like half of our hit potential when not using the Akimbo kit, so it really cuts down that range potential. And then our two shot kill range is 11 meters. And since this is an akimbo gun, that's technically like a one shot kill. If you fire both guns at the same time, we can get effectively a one shot kill out to 11 meters if we're nicely centered and hitting most of our pellets. It's not gonna be extremely consistent at that range. It's just possible to get that one shot kill out to 11 meters. And then with one single gun, we're capable of getting a one shot kill at 2.3 meters. And since one single gun on its own isn't very effective outside of basically point blank range, I would always recommend firing both of these guns at the same time instead of going for that alternate fire. It's one of those cases where you don't wanna fire one shot just to see if maybe that's actually gonna kill them because most of the time it's not. You wanna fire both guns at once and go all in on that kill. Now, when you do that, if you think of this as a one-shot kill rather than a two-shot kill, the Jack Devastators can actually be pretty effective as a shotgun as long as you're keeping your distances close. In fact, I would say it's far more effective than the semi-auto mode on the Reclaimer 18, and it's probably a little more consistent than the pump action mode as well, in my experience. So it might not look overly impressive here, but in my experience, it's actually not that bad as a shotgun, as long as you keep your distances close, and also make sure you're not firing while sliding. You might see that a little bit in some of the gameplay, and that just kills your hip fire spread and makes it nearly impossible to get that one shot, or I guess technically two shot kill against enemy players, unless you're practically touching them. Now keep in mind, those range values are with the base ammo type. So let's take a deeper look at the other ammo types. And I'll just tell you guys right up front with both Bolo as well as Slugs, it's just not even worth using since your hit fire spread is going to be too wide for any sort of hit consistency. And that essentially just makes it useless to even attempt to use those. I mean, if you really want to challenge yourself and tie an arm behind your back and blindfold yourself, then go for it. But it's just simply not really viable to be using those. So I mainly wanted to focus on Dragon's Breath since I'm sure many people are wondering about this. And when it comes to using this ammo type, the first thing to point out is it reduces our maximum hit potential all the way down to just 12.5 meters. You literally can't deal damage beyond that range. And that's not a very long range at all. Even for a shotgun, that's not a very long range. 
So that's a big thing to keep in mind. Then our two shot kill potential, or one shot if firing both guns at once. Against a non-EOD user, this is 7.5 meters, which is very noticeably worse than the base jack devastators without this ammo type. And then against somebody that is using EOD, this range is cut down to just five meters, which is pretty bad. Now in saying that though, with a single gun, we've actually got better power than the base jack devastators, at least against non-flak jacket users. Our one shot kill potential, like literally one shot kill potential with just one gun is four and a half meters, so not bad. However, the moment you come across an EOD user, it cuts that down to 2.7 meters, which technically is a little bit better than the base jack devastators, but not really by enough to justify the other downsides that come with it, like the very noticeably reduced two shot kill potential. So overall, I would say Dragon's Breath is typically not worth using. It's not totally unusable with Dragon's Breath. I just feel you're gonna be far more consistent without it, especially if you've got several EOD users in your lobby. And there we go, that wraps it up for all of the most important stats to point out with this. However, there is also one key thing to note about about this kit and a lot of people will see this as a bug but it's actually just the way that they decided to program these to I think avoid having to create new animations but one thing you may have noticed is when you fire these guns and try to swap to a different weapon there is a very long delay before you'll actually pull out the next weapon like in this case here I hit the swap weapon button the moment after I fired the shot and yet there's a really long delay before it initiates that swap Whereas doing it the other way around, I did the exact same thing swapping from a different gun to these, you can see that there's a much shorter delay before you can initiate that weapon swap. And the reason we have this delay is with most guns that have a slow fire rate like this, you have your fire time, and then on top of that, you have your rechamber time. And that's typically where there will be an animation that takes place between the shots that you're firing. Whereas in this case, again, I think this was just to cut corners to avoid having to create a new animation. They just eliminated the rechamber time or rechamber delay entirely and just gave us a very long fire time to achieve the intended rate of fire that they were aiming for with this at 66 rounds per minute. But what this means is for that entire duration of the fire time, there are certain actions that you simply can't perform like swapping weapons. And this is something I did find quite frustrating while playing. It really feels awkward having to deal with this with these guns. And it's something you have to be ready for. I think ideally, even if they don't want to do an animation for this, it would be great to have a much shorter fire time, but then just include a rechamber delay. But I mean, at this point in the game's life cycle, I'm not sure if they're actually willing to make adjustments like that. It's not like these guns are totally unusable. It's just a really awkward characteristic that they have that can be frustrating to deal with. In either case, let's wrap this video up with the best attachments to use with the Jack Devastators. And in this case, I can very confidently just say these are the best attachments. It's not like we have a whole lot of options to deal with here. So when using this, you're almost always going to want to use the Bryson Choke, the Schlager ULO 66 Laser, and the Center Mass Grip Tape. This will give you a slightly improved sprint out time and the tightest possible hip fire spread. And that's really all you can ask for when it comes to this setup with our limited attachment selection. And there we go. That's going to wrap it up today's video on the Jack Devastators for the Reclaimer 18. And when it comes to my thoughts on these, while they're definitely no Jack Wardens, they're not nearly as good as those have been, I still kind of like the addition of these to the game. It's not totally unusable, especially on the really small maps where you can close those distances super effectively. It may not be the best way to use a shotgun in the game out there, but I've managed to find some success with it, and I just find it to be enjoyable. Now, of course, these are just my opinions, and I'd love to know what you guys think about this in those comments down below. If you enjoyed this one, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.